This is my Kirkusui 300 watt electronic load. I've had it for many years and uh, a few, apart from a few minor faults it, um, it works very well. But one of the problems with using this is um, it's quite a powerful unit, it goes up to 300 watts and as such it uses a forced air cooling system, uh, basically a fan. And the fan is quite a big fan and it's quite a noisy fan and perhaps the easier way to uh, demonstrate that is just to switch it on. So I think some people complain about the fans on a modern oscilloscope or such like. Well, um, I don't think the fan on this would compare with uh, with that. It's it's certainly quite a noise, and unfortunately, it pretty quickly gets uh, gets annoying. So we'll switch that off. So what I thought I would do is. Uh, homebrew my own uh, electronic load. I don't need anything with the capacity of this uh, Kirkusui unit. Uh, what I want to do with it is just look at the discharge characteristics of some small batteries and maybe also do some work to investigate um, solar cells. So really I only really need something which will perhaps go up to 12 volts and uh, no more than one amp. The other thing that will be very useful, or in fact is actually probably even more important, is the fact that I can record these measurements um, in some kind of uh, log. So ideally this DC load I would be able to connect it to a computer and do some simple logging as well. So with all these things in mind and uh, a junk box full of scrap parts I decided to have a go at homebrewing one of these units. And this is the DC load that I constructed. I'm afraid there's nothing very uh, interesting or original, but I'll just point out some of the basic details of it. Um, I used an FTDI chip because um, I don't really have the equipment to uh, mount surface mount chips, so it was just much easier to purchase uh, an off-the-shelf um, FTDI serial converter, which is built onto... Um, a little circuit board. I do plan on actually knocking out a full PCB circuit board for this. Um, probably the circuit that I use won't bear much resemblance to this one because this was just a trial using parts from the junk box. But um, if I do I'll probably will make a surface mount version. So we've got the, uh, the FTDI chip here mounted on its little circuit board. We've got a ferrite bead just to stop uh, any noise coming from the PC as well as some capacitance. We've also got a PTC thermal fuse here which I think is about 100 milliamps and we've got um, an isolation DC to DC converter here and after the DC to D convert we've got a, a choke. I, I initially had really lots and lots of problems with um, quite nasty 400 millivolt spikes that just seem to be uh, radiating all over my circuit and down all my connecting wires and uh, at first I just kept adding more and more capacitance and more and more uh, um, uh, more inductance on the chokes and that actually had no um, was no benefit whatsoever and in the end uh, I found what I actually needed to fit was uh, just a little EMI uh, capacitor which effectively connects the uh, primary to the secondary of the uh, DC to DC converter and that was enough to kill everything. Um, so we come out of the DC to DC converter on about uh, 12 volts and unfortunately that's the only DC to DC converter I had and the only quad up on that I had wasn't a rail to rail device. So what I've actually done is effectively created a virtual earth. I've got a 5 volt reference regulator here but this is actually sat on top of a, a 2.5 volt Zener. So my, uh, my actual ground if you like or 0 volts is actually about 2.5 volts above what 0 volts should be. Um, so we've got a two we've got a five volt regulator there. Um, the five volt regulator 
powers the pick chip which is a 16F690 and we've got the usual um, current sense resistor here. I actually tried quite a few different resistors because um, it seems very popular to build these up out of uh, 2.5 watt carbon resistors but I actually found this uh, wire wound resistor that was in the junk box and I actually found that it, in some ways it works quite well because I think it does have a little bit of an inductance and that does um, help to kill any oscillation that which can occur especially if you have maybe some under certain voltage or low configurations so I did try this originally with some carbon resistors and it didn't work as well so I just used what was in the junk box which was a, a wire round power resistor and this says completely cold um, this um, DC load really works the same as all the others where what we do is we're outputting a, a pulse uh, a pulse width modulation which uh, represents the current that we want to set this goes through some low pass filtering to the uh, quad op amp here and also what I'm using this op amp for is um, I'm feeding back some uh, analog signals back to the pick so I have a, a voltage measurement and I've also got a milliamp current measurement so the pick can actually record um, the current that's been set it can measure the current that's been set and then it can send that back via the serial port to the computer so it can display it. there's a, a trimmer pot here which is just used for fine adjustment of the current and some uh, LEDs which really don't do anything very much the idea was I was going to make them flash whenever it was transmitted or receiving just to show that there's some COM activity the output pass device is the usual FET and of course it's just a logic level FET that I'm using ok if we just do a demonstration of using the load if I uh, just click on the uh, 0 milliamps what's happened is that the um, the terminal program has sent set I 0 0 0 and what you can see on the screen here is the commands that have been echoed, echoed back from the load and, and the load will have responded by setting the output to 0 milliamps I can also um, increase that so we can choose 50 milliamps or we can choose 100 milliamps or we can choose 250 milliamps, 500, 750, or a thousand milliamps. Zero milliamps, 50 milliamps, 100 milliamps. 250 milliamps, 500 milliamps, 750 milliamps, and 1 amp. Another feature of the Bray Terminal program is that you can set up and send various macros. Here I've just got it set up to uh, send a 250 milliamp instruction and also a 1000 milliamp instruction and it sends them approximately once a second. We can also get the current measurement information back from the load. So if I just press this get button here it will get the voltage and the current. So first of all we can see that the terminal sent GI which is used to get current and actually the voltage and the load responded by sending back 0500,0999 and what this actually means is that the um, 
The voltage measurement across the terminals of the load is 5 volts and the, uh, the current setting is 999 milliamps. Now the, um, the actual set current was 1000 milliamps and we've got a couple of milliamps error across the reading range here but it's quite accurate enough for what I need. Well I don't think we'll bother to discharge this little battery at a sensible rate because uh, I think I just want to hammer it and just see if this uh, load works. Um, so I think we'll choose uh, a load current of about 100 milliamps which uh, I would have thought will discharge this little battery very quickly. So we'll just start the log going. Okay so the computer log is now running and we will now set the, um, the output current to uh, 100 milliamps. And uh, you can immediately see that the battery voltage, uh, terminal voltage, dropped rapidly there, and that's because we really are hammering this little uh, this little battery. It's being discharged rate at a much much uh, higher rate than it was ever designed to, and we'll just leave that running. This is the uh, terminal program which I've been using, which actually does the logging. Um, and I will just put a shout out to the author of this program because it is uh, free to download and it's the uh, the Bray terminal and uh, it actually works really well and it has some really nice features. It also has some built-in graphing features which um, I haven't used yet but they are built into it. But it makes it very easy to uh, send and receive ASCII strings and also to record them into a log. Okay, this is the log that we recorded, and I gave it a file name LR44, and this has been produced by the uh, terminal program that we've been running. You can see the instruction there, GI, that's been sent from the terminal program to the DC load, and um, the DC load has responded by giving the output voltage and the current. It's then waited uh, about half a second, it's sent another GI instruction and then it's replied again with the, uh, the voltage and the load. When we started logging the information, the actual load um, wasn't switched on, or the, the load current wasn't set. So if we go down uh, and have a look through the log, we can see that um, this point here, GI, sorry SI, we sent a set current command which was set current to 100 milliamps and then the next measurement after we can see that the um, the load um, did, in, did in fact um, set itself to 100 milliamps and the terminal voltage of the battery immediately dropped. So let's just have a scroll through the data and we should see that the terminal voltage keeps dropping and dropping. 